Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is August the 10th, 2024. And this is going to be a part two to our study on do animals work, are animals allowed to work on the Sabbath? So let's go ahead and get started. This is the verse that made me originally question whether or not that was true. Let's go ahead and read this. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughters, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thine cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. So the implication here is that you're going to keep the Sabbath here so that your manservant and your maidservant may rest as well as you. Okay, so you are going to rest and then your animals and everything else has to rest so that your manservant and your maidservant may rest. So the way that it's worded, it does deserve some sort of investigation to see if the animals qualify as not needing to work on that day. So this is the verse. I, I still only have the three verses. We're just going to take a closer look at the same three verses um, that I looked at before because I did the last study kind of quick. So in this this time when I looked at it, I was trying to prove it correct. I was not able to but I'll take you through the steps so that you can see for yourself and then we'll go take a look at Leviticus and see what it says because even though your animals are not supposed to work on the Sabbath it doesn't really apply to all of the holidays it only applies to the Sabbath uh, and the Day of Atonement let's go ahead and take a look at this verse Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thine handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. This verse, I should have just tossed this out at the very beginning. This cannot be used to oppose the previous verse. It cannot be used to oppose, be opposed to this. I'll show you while we'll, well, we'll look at it together. This first part is okay. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. But then it goes on, that thine ox and thy ass may rest. Well, if we were to apply the same logic, you're resting so that your ox and your ass may rest. Well, who's more important, the ox and the ass or you? <laughs> this puts the ox and the ass <laughs> over you in importance. Then it goes on to say, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Well, what does the son of your handmaid and the stranger have to do with you taking a Sabbath? It doesn't say anything about your handmaid or your servant. It, it says the son of your handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. So you have to stop working? That doesn't make any sense. Your ox and your ass can still work while you're taking a Sabbath. You could rent them out to someone else. You could have them out there working the whole time and they can rest on their own. Uh, this, it just doesn't make any sense. It has to be, no, it, it has to be wrong. It's tampered, tampered with. It just is. And a lot of the stuff in here is. It jumps around too much. But let's continue on because there were two more two more verses that I looked at. So let's take a look at those. So Nehemiah thirteen fifteen. In those days saw I and Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath. So we know that's wrong. Okay. You I mean you can you can buy and sell. Buy and sell buying and selling is not considered work on the Sabbath. Okay, but you're not supposed to be producing goods to sell. That's not permitted. And bringing in sheaves, okay, so some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and lading asses. 
as also wine grapes and figs and all manner of burdens the reason why it's the reason why it's worded like this is because it says in bringing in sheaves and lady asses the asses were pulling in the sheaves okay and then it says it's unlading asses also because it's telling you that first the asses were pulling a wagon or something behind them with sheaves and then on the back of the asses were the were wine or grapes or figs in all manner of burdens he didn't know but different things but but it implied that the asses were being worked they had a load on their back and they had a load strapped to them to drag along okay which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day and I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals now when I first read this I believe I thought that this was them selling on the Sabbath that's not what's going on here this word for victuals it actually means food that you hunt so we know you can't go out hunting on the Sabbath hunting game game a uh, provision food that you have hunted down and brought to brought to town to sell that same day so he's saying that not on the Sabbath day but on a work day when he went he went into town and he testified against these people that they were lading these asses and working these animals. I was trying to prove this right. That's why I went through and I'm checking each word and I'm working out the sentences. I mean, I'm working it out piece by piece. And I took a lot of time with this, um, looking for something to make this, so, something to make this mean other than it was wrong for him them to be lading the asses and um, on the Sabbath day and it just didn't turn out that way <laughs> he he did not testify them on the Sabbath it doesn't say anything about them selling on the Sabbath day it's talking about them bringing in these asses laden with burdens and that's what he testified against them. He testified against them preparing wine to be served later or to be um, sold later. And he testified against them for working the animals. That's the only conclusion that I could come up with when I really closely looked at this sentence. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Not the same day, but on the day where they could sell their hunting and they would hunt something and the same day they hunted it they would take it to town and sell it and that's what he's saying there so this is saying that they were wrong to have laid in those asses on the sabbath i have one more scripture And if the people of the land bring ware of any victuals, this is a different victuals. It just means grains. Grain, corn, food. The word for food is different though. It's like four nine four something nine nine. I can't remember the exact number. But I'm pretty sure it ends in two nines something like that anyway and if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day that we would leave this and and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt now this doesn't say what it appears to say either so let's look at this in our application scriptures for all and keep in mind this is before he saw he saw this is before the previous verse that we looked at okay and the people of the land the ones bringing the wares 
and all of the victuals in the day of the Sabbath. He's talking about the people of a different land. When he says the people of the land, he's saying the people of, other, of another nation or people um, who are non-Israelites. Non the ones bringing in the wares because the Israelites know not to do this. So these are other people bringing them in to sell. Then we shall not take or we shall not buy from them on the Sabbath. We don't need the rest of it. Oh, the holy day is um, the day of atonement. Or on the day of atonement. And that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. Okay, we don't need that though. So, but we want to look at this because he's saying if the people of other nations, they come and they bring their wares or any food, because we know they can eat grains, on the Sabbath day to sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the Holy Day which is the Day of Atonement. So now we have to ask ourselves why? Why can't he buy from people of the land bringing in wares or victuals on the Sabbath? Is it because it's the Sabbath? Is it because it's the people of the land? <laughs> no, it's because they're bringing it in. If it was because of the Sabbath, he would say, don't buy from anyone on the Sabbath. If it was because it was from the people of the land, he would say, don't buy from people of the land. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I don't see the point of saying don't buy from them on the Sabbath if they're people from another nation. He would just say don't buy from them. The point is, if they bring their wares and their food in on the Sabbath day to sell. You can buy from them if it's not the Sabbath. You can buy from them if they're selling. You can buy from them if they're not bringing it in. But if they bring it in, which is wrong, on the Sabbath day, because they're burdening, they're putting a burden upon that beast, then you cannot buy from them. Buying and selling is not working in the Bible. It's not. Otherwise, he would say, don't buy from anyone on the Sabbath. <laughs> don't sell on the Sabbath. It would not be exclusive to another group of people, which is exactly what's going on here. So in the end, I did come up with animals simply cannot work on the Sabbath. Now there is another there is another verse which I didn't put in here where Jesus rides a coat in on the ninth day. Now that is I haven't really spoken to you guys about it but the ninth day the atonement is is actually an actual holiday on um, from the seventh month but it's in the first month so the ninth day is the day of is the day where you um, humble yourself and afflict your soul. And then the tenth day where they say in Jubilee 25 that you sound the horn for um, the Jubilee and then everything goes back to people that you know all debts are cleared and the land is returned that's that and the other that's on the 10th day of the month at high noon keep in mind when I say the 10th I'm just using the dates that are given in the Bible but I'm I'm visualizing one week before the new year because we've already gone over that so if the 31st is the so you have the first which is the seventh day or the 15th and then you have the 30th or the 31st which would be the 6th day and so on and so forth. I think the 9th would be the 25th and then the day of the Jubilee or the release of the Jubilee would be the 26th on the 10th and then everything goes back to normal for that one week of celebration. Everyone has their own property and they're celebrating for the rest of the week. And then the second lamb would be killed 
for the atonement is not killed on the 9th or the 10th. It's actually killed on the... That's the limb that ki that's killed at high noon. You know, I need to... I have an... I need to study the Day of Atonement. I'm not certain about that, but the lamb that's killed at high noon is the lamb for the atonement, and the one that's killed at nine is the Passover lamb. But I have to I have to do a little bit more research to be certain about which day that atonement lamb is killed, is um sacrificed. I don't know how I even got off on that, but let's continue on. So we're going to go to Leviticus now. We're going to take a look at that. <clears throat> I can't remember how I got off on the Day of Atonement. I, If I forgot something, I'm sorry, I'll leave a note or something later, or I'll post something. Keep the Sabbath day. Well, we'll go to Leviticus after we review this again. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Then, of course, you have the, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. This is not correct. This would have been added later on. You can know that it is not correct. Because we've already been given the command up here that the manservant and the maidservant are to rest as well as you. So why, if we are given the command that the manservant and the maidservant are to rest as well as you, why then would we be given instructions that your ox and your ass and your cattle have to rest so that they can rest. You just let them rest when you rest. They're a part of the family. If you re When you rest on the Sabbath, they rest. That's the command. No conditions apply to the Sabbath. You rest, your children rest, your servants rest, your animals rest. Everyone gets to enjoy the Sabbath. So, that is that. This just doesn't belong here, and it doesn't make sense. It's, it's not even really qualifying who is supposed to rest because of it. Uh, you, we just skip over the stranger. You would have to skip over the stranger and then pick out and then pluck out the ox and the ass and the cattle and say, hmm. I'm going to apply this sentence to them and not to that. So it just doesn't work. They do have to rest on the Sabbath. So let's quickly look at Leviticus 23 and see what it says. Now I made a mistake here <laughs> when I interpreted this. First, let's read through this. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. The feast is really, I don't, I don't even like calling them feasts anymore. They're appointed times when God will meet with you. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation, ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. The problem was the punctuation. That's why I got it wrong. Let me get rid of this so that I can see a little bit better. Okay, six days shall work be done. It can be a comma or, yeah, six days shall work be done, comma. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now, you can put a comma here if you want to, but then you have to put this in parenthesis because it's not a part of the definition. The seventh day and the Sabbath are synonymous with one another. Because of this colon here, I made all three of these synonymous. Seventh day, Sabbath, rest. And holy convocation. Holy convocation is not a Sabbath. When you can, and we're going to look at several examples where they talk about a holy convocation, and they never say rest. But when they talk about the Sabbath, almost every single time they'll say rest. Not every time, 
And I had some examples. I had one example in here. I took it out because I forgot why I had it in here. So I took it out. <laughs> but there's at least one example where it says Sabbath and it doesn't say rest. Um, six days shall work be done, comma, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, period. Or, um, period. Or you could say it is a holy convocation. We'll just add it here and not here. It is a holy convocation. You shall, period, you shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Um, I wanted to also look at the you shall do no work therein. But I've kind of already spoken on this in the buying and selling video. The work is not all work. The work goes back to Genesis where he's speaking of creating. He's speaking of where he created and and made things for other people to for other people to have um, or to sell or to use. That's what work is here. And when it goes down, when we get down here to serve our work, this specifically is saying you work for another person. <laughs> um, yeah, for free or for pay. It's just a regular holiday. <laughs> it's just a leave. That's what all of the other ones are except for the Day of Atonement. We'll look through them quickly. <clears throat> These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. It's completely different than up here. You shall do no work therein. It's different. Holy convocation is not synonymous with Sabbath. It's not a Sabbath. It doesn't have the word rest here, which is the H7677. Sabbath is H7676. It doesn't even call it a Sabbath. It just says it's a holy convocation. But because I believed that Seventh day, Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation were all synonymous, I have taught that you are supposed to rest on these days you are not. You're not supposed to work for another person. That is the only qualification that's given. And Passover is not a Sabbath at all. This isn't even real. They worked on the Passover in the New Testament. Not only that, let's finish this up. The first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. But she shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And the seventh day is an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Um, the reason why it says the first day you shall have a holy convocation, you shall do no servile work. And then um, the seventh day is a holy convocation is because if you remember the graph, let me pull it up so I can show you. Hold on. Okay, I couldn't find a, a calendar that was perfect, but that's okay. This is going to be, this is close enough for me to explain what's going on here. Okay, so the first day of the Passover week is the ninth. Okay, that's the, the Day of Atonement. This is a, this is a, um, this is a Sabbath. As a matter of fact, this might be the only day where you're not supposed to work at all. And then the last day is a is a Sabbath. The seventh day is a Sabbath. So when it says the first day and the seventh day, it just pulled that from the original the original prophets and made the first day and the seventh day a Sabbath, which is correct, but not the 14th and the 15th. They worked on the 14th. It's not a Sabbath in the New Testament. It was no problem at all. I just remembered something. I didn't finish my thought about Jesus riding the, riding the donkey. Jesus was able to ride that donkey on the Sabbath because that donkey hadn't worked a day in his life. <laughs> it had to have its mother with him in order for him to leave because the mother probably would have thrown a fit and acted up so it was so it was young enough to hold I mean it was old enough to carry Jesus um, but still it it needed its mother to be with them 
So when he rode the colt, that would have probably that would have been the first day that colt ever worked. <laughs> so it didn't have to take the Sabbath because you work six days and then the seventh is the Sabbath. That's the way it works. So Jesus rode the colt in. It was perfectly fine because it was a baby colt. The mother was beside it because it was so young. But that was the first day it ever worked. Okay, back to this. The first day you should have a holy convocation. You should do no servile work therein, which is correct if this was correct. Notice they don't say anything at all about what you're supposed to do on the Passover. They don't say kill the lamb. They don't say do this, that, or the other. Look at the details they give for the feast, the first fruits you're supposed to go through and do this, that, and the other. It tells you all kinds of sacrifices to make. But the supposedly the most important feast day of all, it says absolutely nothing because it wasn't there. It was telling you, it was telling you about the first day. Well, it probably was there, but they took it out, but they left it in the first day. That's why this is here. The first day is the ninth. You should have a holy convocation. You should do no servile work therein. And then the last day, of course, is the first day of the year. And then we have the first fruits. We'll just skip past all of that. We're getting late, short on time. Um, you shall proclaim the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work. Nothing about resting. Just don't work for anyone else. It's a holiday. Then we get to the Feast of Trumpets. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, Say, On the seventh month, on the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath. Now, this was all just made up anyway. <laughs> um, but we don't really know if they pulled this from the original writing or not. So, since we know... Let me see. The Passover is a memorial. We could say that you don't blow the trumpets on the set on the Passover, though. You should have a memorial blowing of the trumpets. So it would have to be the, either the Sabbath of the Day of Atonement on the ninth, and then you blow the trumpets on the tenth, or the blowing of the trumpets at the beginning of the new year that they're speaking of. Well, the, probably the new year because it's on the first day of the month. Okay which would be here the first day of the year okay you shall do no serve all work therein same thing nothing about a rest but it does use the H7677 which is the number for Sabbath then you get here now this of course you know is wrong notice how every time Moses speaks with God, it starts off, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and then it's, it tells you what was said. And then it starts here, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and then it tells you about the Feast of First Fruits. Then you get to the trumpets, and it said, says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and then it tells you about the Feast of Trumpets. This is a different occasion where he spoke to the Lord, but it continues on. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, also, no. You don't say also. You just keep going telling what he said. Uh, what did he forget? And he came back later and said, Oh yeah, you know Moses, um, yeah, also about when I, when I told you about the Feast of Trumpets, also on this, it says this seventh month. No, they're adding on to this as though God forgot to tell him something. It, this is not real. Well, parts of it may be real because we know that you do blow the trumpet. Well, yeah, you blow the trumpet. None of the feast days of the seventh month are real. None of them are. As a matter of fact, before I even discovered that, in order to make any kind of sense of the feast of the seventh month, I had to take them and impose them upon the first month and then use a spiritual interpretation of all of them. Otherwise, they have absolutely no meaning at all. It's ridiculous to say that you're supposed to sit out in the tent for a week during the seventh month when you left out on the first month. How does that make sense? And then the reasons are just insulting that, <laughs> that they give. We haven't gone over that, so I won't talk about it much. But the Feast of Booths, it's, it's just made up. Now the days may be correct. I have to look into that, but the the camping out on the seventh month, absolutely not. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this month, it's not this month, because it's not a continuation of this. On the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. This is correct. And it shall be a holy convocation unto you. And you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And you shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you. So you shall do no manner of work. And it also uses Sabbath the rest here. I, I'm, I do have to look a little bit more into the day of atonement separate when I have time to do its own study. This is really about the only day where you might not, where you're maybe not supposed to do any work. The Sabbath, you can work for yourself. All of the other holidays are just holidays as we know them today. You don't have to go to work on that day. <laughs> you get a day off. That's all there is to it. It doesn't say anything about your animals needing to rest. N nothing like that. That's the Sabbath only. Only the Sabbath. Let's go on. So I pulled up a bunch of examples. We don't need all of them. So, well, we'll just go through them really quick. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. This is the day of unleavened, Feast of Unleavened Bread. In the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. We just looked at that from the previous scripture. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. But because we're talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it doesn't use the word rest. It's only talking about them as holy convocation. I don't know why I highlighted that. Let's move on. Six days you shall gather, but in the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there shall be none. So this is the gathering of the manna. See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In hearing time and in harvest thou shalt rest. Six days may work be done, but on the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Again, holy to the Lord. Six days there shall, shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you in holy day a Sabbath of rest. Again, when it speaks of the Sabbath, it speaks of rest. It doesn't care about the holy convocation as much as it does the rest. And all of the other holidays talk about the holy convocation, the meeting, um, and the meeting with other friends in order to praise God. They're holidays. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. They shall do no work therein, which matches our calendar. This is the millennium. And this is that's one of the scriptures why I believe that the lamb of um, Numbers 28, there's two lambs killed. One is the Passover lamb, one is the lamb of the atonement. It's not two goats. It's one goat, one lamb. That's the way it is. Jesus is not represented by, as a goat anywhere else in the Bible. <laughs> Why would he be represented as a goat there? Goat is a representative of Satan in the Bible. So the second lamb is the lamb of the atonement. Um, okay, we're not going to get into that again. Let's just move on. And almost done, surely. Okay, just two more. And this shall be a statue forever unto you, that in the seventh month, in the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be of your, one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. So it doesn't use the word Sabbath here, but it does in Leviticus. I can't remember if it says servile work. I think it says no work at all, which is similar to um, Leviticus 3, where it's describing the Sabbath. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. I didn't put any, I didn't put enough scriptures in here for you to garner the meaning of service, but you can look it up on your own. Service can be service as bondage or service as an employee. 
is if you're working for someone else and you're you're working in service to them. Buying and selling is not work. It's just different in the Bible it is. And I think that's all of our scriptures. So yes, your animals do rest on the Sabbath. But if you're worried about the conflicts, the seeming conflicts about animals working on some of the feast days, there is no conflict because your animals can work on the feast days. Only the Sabbath they're not supposed to work and possibly the Day of Atonement that's going to require further investigation on my part. Anyway, I'll leave it at that and I'll talk to you in the next video.